In autumn and spring each year, we trap the bandicoot population to see how they're going. We do this to estimate the numbers of individuals, determine the health of the population, and to conduct translocations or movements of animals to different sites. We use 120 traps and we put them at 60 points across the reserve at about 100 metres apart. Two traps per site. These sites are listed on a data sheet which we fill out as we check the traps each morning. The traps are carefully designed to avoid them injuring the bandicoots. We put a mat in the bottom of the cage here so it has a place to rest for the for the time it's in the trap and we put this tarp over the top to keep it out of the sun and the rain. We always set the traps facing north-south so when the sun comes up from the east and sets in the west it gives them some shade with this cover. To, to catch them we need to use a bait which they like and, and, this, is, and this is it. They love peanut butter roll, rolled oats and honey, funnily enough, and so do we. Yeah. We get a lot of help from volunteers and our partners to, to do this because it's a big job, especially at the start and end when we're setting the traps up and then collecting them back on the last day. Generally people team up and put the traps out the afternoon before we start checking traps the next morning. We normally uh, catch 10 to 15 eastern bar bandicoots and we often catch uh, brush tail possums too. 580. When we catch a bandicoot, we examine it carefully to check that it's healthy. We do like a fat score on its rump. And we check for injuries and, and, and ticks and things like that to just to see that it's doing okay. And of course, if it's a female, we'll um, check its pouch to see if it has any pouch young. So we're going to use this scanner to check for a pit tag. The tags are inserted into the back of the neck, so that's the first place we check. Triple zero, seven six, three five. So each new animal we get a hair sample from and we put it in this alcohol solution. It has the chip number on the vial as well so we can ID which animal it's come from and we use this to trace genetics. We record all this information electronically and it's held centrally by the recovery team and that we then use to, to check uh, and, and monitor the progress of the population over time.